Tonight, I'm pleased to present to you the proposed balanced budget for 2018. This budget represents a continuing investment in the projects, services, and people that keep our residents safe and maintain our quality of life. This marks my 14th budget address since taking office in November 2003. As I prepare to retire next month, it is incredible to reflect on how our community has grown and to take stock on what we've accomplished by working together. In this past year alone, we have celebrated several momentous and positive changes in our city, and I look forward to more announcements in the coming months. At this time last year, Polygon had just begun building single-family homes in the riverfront development. Now, as the Everett Herald reported this week, families have already moved into 60 homes and sales are pending on another 22 homes. The north end of this site is just as active with 36 townhomes occupied and another 22 sales in process. 185 more homes and townhomes will be constructed in this growing community. To the west, construction will begin early next year on the Fisherman's Harbor the first phase of the port's 65-acre Waterfront Place Central mixed-use development. This district will be a year-round hub of activity with approximately 266 apartment homes, 142-room hotel with meeting and event space, nine retail and waterfront restaurant spaces. Waterfront Place is designed for public access and will offer a trail, dock walk, and the Pacific Rim Plaza with a splash fountain and tribute to the port's international seaport mission. In all, more than 1,150 multifamily housing units are currently pending or under construction throughout the city. As new families and professionals relocate to Everett, homes are selling 22% faster than last year, and the average sales price of a home is 372000 up from 319,000 in September of 2016. Our retail landscape is also transforming, particularly in the downtown core. In August, we celebrated the grand opening of Funco's 7,000 square foot flagship store and headquarters just down the street on Wetmore. 250 employees work at this new location, designing toys and assisting customers in the store, which has attracted fanatics from around the globe. <laughs> Farm and Market on Grand Avenue is scheduled uh, to open in early 2018, and the Carlin Company is negotiating several letters of intent for ground floor retail spaces. The development will be known as Grand Avenue Marketplace and Grand Avenue Apartments, and is a highly anticipated addition to our active downtown core. We've also welcomed many new restaurants and shops downtown, and we celebrated the expansion of others, from coffee to sushi to breweries to local art. Visitors and residents walking in our downtown streets have many new and exciting options for shopping, dining, and entertainment. Everett continues to grow as a destination for art, music, theater, and events. The Village Theater saw record attendance this year with nearly 7,800 subscribers in Everett, and 58,000 patrons attending a show during the 2016-2017 season. Nearly 300,000 people will attend events at Xfinity Arena and Conference Center this year, representing more than 1.4 million in income. In January, we launched the city's new tourism initiative. This is Everett, designed to highlight Everett's ideal location and unique, affordable offerings. The Marriott Hotel and Wood Springs Hotel both opened in May, enhancing our ability to attract major conferences and events. As the downtown adds more people, shops, and restaurants, we're working with the Downtown Everett Association to expand the business improvement area to provide services to a larger area. We can expect, expect to bring an ordinance establishing the new expanded BIA for Council's consideration before the end of the year. We know more housing will be needed to accommodate our growing population, especially in the downtown core and near the Everett Station. It is critical that future growth is thoughtful, responsible, and gets us closer to our vision of a vibrant, walkable, and transit-friendly city center. The Metro Everett planning effort is currently being reviewed by the 
Planning Commission and will come before the City Council in early 2018. The plan includes new building heights, potential changes to parking requirements, and incentives for developers. The downtown core is not <clears throat> the only part of Everett experiencing transformation. Last month, the Everett Mall was purchased by real estate investment company Brixton Capital with plans for upgrades and potential new uses at the site. We look forward to working with the company as they move ahead with redevelopment of this important retail hub. Our aerospace sector continues to attract new talent and customers. Last month, Boeing began assembly of the 777X with the first jets expected to be delivered in 2020. Airlines from around the world have already ordered 340 of the new planes. The 777X program and Boeing's new composite wing center are a testament to the company and Everett's leading role in the aerospace industry. In North Everett, Seattle's Children's Hospital broke ground this spring with its new North Clinic at the Providence Regional Medical Center, Colby Campus. The 37,000 square foot facility will open next August, offering more than 15 pediatric subspecialties of care. The new clinic expects 15,000 patients the first year and up to 25,000 visits by 2021. In August, we celebrated the grand opening of the new 95,000 square foot home of Washington State University, North Puget Sound at Everett. This incredible new facility represents decades of tireless advocacy by community partners and an opportunity for students in our region to pursue a world-class education close to home. Everett Community College celebrated its 75th anniversary this summer. They are the first college in the state to offer advanced avi avionics program, which trains students to maintain, troubleshoot, and repair aircraft electronic systems. The college opened the newest student housing, Cedar Hall, in September, offering an additional 132 beds for students and further transforming uh, North Broadway. The Everett Public School District continues to make incredible strides in student success and classroom innovation. Our students outperform the state on assessments in every subject and every grade, often surpassing state scores by double digits. Nearly 91% of the students graduate in four years, and the district has the highest graduation rate in the state among students for whom English is not their native language. New residents and new businesses count on being able to get where they need to go efficiently and safely, and we're uh, we are finally seeing much needed components of our transportation network starting to take shape. Propeller uh, airports broke ground on a two-gate terminal at Payne Field in June, and by the end of 2018, we'll be able to board flights on Alaska and United Airlines. Last year, voters approved ST3 package, which will bring light rail to downtown Everett, providing a much-needed transportation connection to Linwood, Seattle, Bellevue, Redmond, SeaTac, and Tacoma. We will continue to work with Sound Transit and Community Transit as they begin to site light rail stations in Everett. Several mobility projects funded through the Connecting Washington package are in design and scheduled to go to construction in 2021, including improvements to SR 529 and I-5 interchange, a peak commuter shoulder lane on I-5 between Everett and Marysville, and improvements on Highway 526 at Hardison. Locally, we're working to ensure that our transit network is well positioned for future regional expansions and is meeting the needs of our community. Everett Transit will complete its long-range planning effort and prepare a report and recommendations to the City Council in early 2018. We continue to benefit from increased development activity and new businesses in Everett. We are currently forecasting 343.8 million in revenue in 2018, and of that, 136 million support general government. However, while we project that general government revenue will continue to climb at about 1.3% annually over the next five years, our staffing and benefit costs are projected to increase by 4% each year. With your support, city staff will continue our ongoing efforts to close the structural imbalance and ensure Everett's long-term financial stability. We cannot rely on the volatile construction sector to provide steady revenues into the future. 
In 2017, we asked the state legislature to, to lift the 1% limitation on property tax growth and to establish a rate that adjusts for further inflation, providing a more reliable source of revenue to maintain our services to our citizens. We will continue to push for this critical tool in 2018. In the meantime, I propose 2018 budget reinvest the revenue from new construction and businesses to maintain and improve critical city infrastructure and to ensure that our community remains safe. This year, we completed a key mobility project on Pacific Rucker and Marine View Drive, which will keep freight and traffic moving between the port and I-5 by adding capacity and improving key intersections. Over the next two years, we will add new sidewalks and pedestrian-friendly features to improve the streetscape on Hoyt Avenue between Wall and Pacific and on Rucker Avenue between Pacific and Everett Avenues. More than half the project funding comes from grants. Work on the new 80-stall park and ride at Ever Station will begin in 2018. The new lot will increase available space for commuters catching a bus or train out of Everett and construction is primarily funded through a 750,000 state grant. Next spring, we will also bring a project to improve bus stops along North Broadway to provide quicker and easier passenger boarding. In addition to changes at the station and bus stops, we're also improving the Everett Transit fleet. With the support of federal and state grants, we're putting seven new all-electric buses into service starting with four in June of next year the new buses will replace the aging diesel buses, improving our efficiency of the fleet and reducing emissions. In North Everett, we continue to make progress on our efforts to separate and improve our sewer and stormwater systems. We broke ground last month on the new Grand Avenue uh, Park Bridge. The bridge will incorporate new stormwater pipes within its structure and provide new unique access from the bluff to the waterfront. The $19.3 million project includes $2 million in grant funding. Next year, we will begin to work on an innovative project that will reroute stormwater runoff to new detention ponds at the Legion Memorial Golf Course while improving the playability of the course. Construction is set to begin in 2018 with work on the second stormwater separation project in the North End beginning in May. Together, the projects represent 7.2 million investment in the city's sewer and stormwater system. In April, we joined community partners to celebrate the completion of the 7.5 mile Tulalip water pipeline. The pipeline provides a reliable long-term water supply for the tribe and represents decades of cooperation and coordination between the city and tribal leaders. With your support, we're moving towards an agreement with YMCA on a new city park in the Glacier View neighborhood and community access to the pool at the new YMCA facility plan for, the Col for Colby Avenue. If the agreement is approved, we will take ownership of the land and begin master planning the park early next year. The 2018 budget also includes nearly $3.3 million in park improvements and replacement work, including a significant renovation to the Phil Johnson ball fields and improvements to the Forest Park Swim Center. As we continue to plan for the future of our park system, our staff is taking a closer look at our golf courses and will provide an update and options to the City Council in early 2018. Next year, we'll begin construction on the much needed expansion of the South Everett Library Branch. The project includes an additional 5,600 square feet of space for meeting, studying, Children's, children's activity and more computers and I look forward to celebrating the grand reopening of the branch next fall. Public safety has always been a top priority uh, throughout my service as mayor and though the challenges may have changed over the past 14 years our commitment to keeping our community safe has never wavered. With many of our police officers reaching retirement age we've intensified our hiring efforts over the past several years. This summer, we ask for your support in launching an incentive package for lateral hires as those experienced officers are able to hit the street in about half the time of a new officer. Our efforts are paying off. We've hired 63 officers since June of 2014, and we're at the lowest vacancy rate since March of 2013. We hired 17 officers this year alone, 
including four lateral officers. Application and interest from laterals is up significantly since we announced the signing bonus in June. And we've seen a number of lateral applications nearly double in the second half of 2017 compared to the first half of the year. We continue to respond to the challenges on our street through our comprehensive safe street plan, which includes compassionate and cost-effective programs to address addiction, mental illness, and homelessness. In January, we filed a lawsuit against Purdue Pharmaceutical for allowing OxyContin to flow to flood the black market, causing the current opioid crisis in Everett. And I'm confident we'll be successful in holding Purdue accountable for their actions in compelling them to help make our community whole. Everett Police Community Outreach and Enforcement Team, which includes two embedded social worker positions, is now in its second year and we're seeing positive outcomes of their intensive work to connect uh, with those on the street with services. Through the end of September, the COAT team has had nearly 1,300 interactions with individuals experienced homelessness and we've sent 24 people to long-term addiction uh, treatment at no cost to the city. Our work crew program, which launched in April of 2016, is now managed through a contract with HopeWorks. From January through September of this year, more than 200 individuals were referred to the work crew and 88 have completed the program. Participants picked up 30 tons of garbage from sidewalk businesses and abandoned encampments. With your support, the Safe Street's supportive housing project is moving forward. We expect to break ground on this new facility in the coming months. The building will house 65 individuals experienced chronic homelessness, surrounding them with around-the-clock support and services. We continue to focus on solutions that will have a long-term positive impact on our community, while also responding to the immediate concerns of residents and business owners. We're working with stakeholder groups throughout the community and supporting neighborhood cleanups, including making free needle cleanup kits available through a partnership with the Snohomish Health, Health District. In two months, the city will gain a new mayor uh, who will take over the leadership of the city's current initiatives, as well as our existing challenges with the Public Works Service Center replacement and our ongoing structural deficit. As we begin the transition, I'm proud to leave behind a tradition of strong fiscal responsibility, which has allowed us to invest in infrastructure and amenities throughout our city and an incredible, uh, as an incredible place to work and to live. Unlike many communities, we weathered the Great Recession without layoffs or major cuts to service, and this is a testament to the foresight and discipline of our financial team, the support of the City Council, and the hard work and dedication of city employees from every department. As with the accomplishments we've celebrated this year, I believe our future success, successes will depend on our ability to work together and to engage all members of our community. Whether we're elected officials, long-term residents, or new to the city, we each have a part to play in bringing the best ideas forward, forward and advocating for the community that, that we love. With your support, we're now engaging new and different people in city government and civic life. This summer, a group of 22 community members helped update the city's vision report, extending it to 2037. In two weeks, our inaugural class of Everett Essentials Civic Academy students will graduate, the beginning of a new network of engaged, motivated community members who have a relationship with the city and an investment in moving it forward. Throughout the community, we're working with business stakeholder associations, parent groups, schools, neighborhoods, and individuals who are taking the initiative to meet the needs they see around them. As I end the, uh, the, uh, my time as mayor, it is clear and, and how valuable these connections and in individuals are. It's been an honor to serve as your mayor and work alongside each of you, and I look forward to seeing what lies ahead forever. Thank you. enough out of me.